aerosolize the nanomaterial, it comes through the reaction chamber. So you can see that it's a nanoparticle coating. This is how we usually think about nanotechnology. Scientists and engineers manipulating incredibly small structures in a state-of-the-art lab. But meet some new players who are also interested in the future of this technology. Political scientists, urban designers, maybe even your next door neighbor. Part of the mission of the center is in fact to develop a capacity of public engagement to allow people to learn what they might need to learn in order to engage with emerging technologies where they can express their opinions and their visions and the values through which scientists and engineers might further pursue nanotechnologies. With support from the National Science Foundation, David Gustin directs the Center for Nanotechnology in Society at Arizona State University. His team engages a wide range of experts and the public to think deeply about where such technologies are headed and how we can make them work effectively for us all. Their Futurescape City Tours project takes residents around neighborhoods to learn more about emerging technologies they might not even know are there, like nanoparticles that are now commonly used to clean up toxic spills or to coat solar panels. We took them on the tour, had them talk about nanotechnologies that were either in place or under development, and develop some perspectives on where they think those nanotechnologies might fruitfully go. We would take on wicked problems, problems that have no single solution. Things like immigration, uh, world hunger, education, and everyone was like, That's not, how's that a design issue? Architect Darren Petrucci is working on designs to make cities more livable. One idea driving the Phoenix 2050 project is to think creatively about how nano and other new technologies can improve energy, transportation, and lifestyle. It looks at both public and privately funded scenarios, some based on 21st century high-tech campuses. And the idea is that every bit of the design is sustainable. It's the favorite one so today. The favorite one today was actually the invisibility cloak. Yeah. They also reach out to kids in schools and science museums, encouraging them to talk about the possibilities for the future. And so we have a bunch of nanotechnology cards of technologies that don't yet exist, but scientists are working on. And we literally line them up and ask the kids, OK, which one of these is most important to you? Nanotech can be polarizing. Some see it as a silver bullet to solve all manner of challenges. Some have concerns. What if the nanoparticles become environmental contaminants? make their way into drinking water or the food supply. My work really focuses on is trying to move away from these extremes. There are decisions we can make now in how we develop this technology that can really begin to shape how it unfolds over the next 10 or 15 years. Getting out in front of new technologies to anticipate and plan for the future, that's no small task. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien.